Okay, so now we are in the welcome SAP build, experience SAP build end to end. And we're gonna follow this tutorial so that we can build our build process automation workflow or process. You can pause anytime you like to read through the paragraphs as I will breeze through it so that the video will not be too long. Take note of the username as we will reference through it all throughout, including the artifacts. So we go back to our lobby, then we're gonna create, here's the create, then we do the business process automation first. Choose build automation process, choose business process, then we enter the project name and append our username to it so later on it's easier to find as this system is shared with the other training participants. is we create the process it's like the main container of our all our entire flow identifier is auto populated we enter the description and press create Now we will create our data type. Our data type will basically the master structure that will contain all our attributes of our seals order, which will be the triggering entity for our workflow or process flow. So that's the only data type we need, but it will be a structure with multiple fields within. So we have a sales order. Then we create each of these fields one by one. We define the name, which is case sensitive, and then the data type. And whether it is required or not. In this case, we just populate the attribute name and the type. This is case sensitive and spelling sensitive, so need to watch out. So we have used string, number, and date types in this example. Don't forget.
you to press save every now and then and sometimes if you leave the screen on for you leave it for too long it will time out and your session will lag you out even even though it, it is staying on the screen and you lose all your progress up to that point from your last save now that we created our structure we configure the API trigger so basically it is the, the event that can be triggered from elsewhere which will kickstart our workflow or process flow Workflows are event based processes it can be triggered anywhere if you're familiar with ABAP workflow it works the same way sales order trigger then we define the input with the data type we just created earlier passing all the sales order information that we had defined mark it as required otherwise the flow would not make sense it will come with an approval form which the approver can approve or reject with different outcomes based on those decisions so first is we're gonna make the approval form the form itself can be created within this build process automation editor approval form container we need to define what will be the subject and then design the UI in the sense what fields what text will appear we can do so by going to edit form after we enter our subject know that this subject can contain uh, variables as well so now we are in our form editor I'm gonna click and drag titles such as the headline the instructions the fields where we can mark it as editable or read only
now that we're done with the form, we go back to the main container and we define our approval forms subject as well as recipients. So this recipient would receive their this approval step in their inbox. And since we're testing or with our we are in a training session, we, we will enter our own account as the recipient so we can open it in our own inbox and approve it from there. Note that some of the instruction may need to be copied and pasted through notepad or typed manually so that it doesn't include any unnecessary bullet point indices such as what you saw earlier. Notice that the subject is con contained a variable. Please review the material, which is the material ID, as part of the input for the workflow trigger. And don't forget to map the form fields with with the workflow input structure through the forms input tab. So this you will have to do field by field, and this is so that your approval, when it goes to the inbox, contains something and it will not be blank. So here we are mapping it with the process input via the sales order data type. Once again, don't forget to save. Next is we will add something in the approve branch there are two outcomes to an approval form approve and reject and in approve we want to trigger a confirmation form this is so that the submitter would be able to know that the approver has approved their request so as usual we will build the form which contains the approved form information. forget to save now going back to the main process container we will define the subject once again and set the recipient in this case in the real scenario the recipient would be the submitter but in this case we will set our own email as the recipients we will, s we will receive it in our inbox and see the outcome And in the Inputs tab, don't forget to map the fields accordingly.
next would be the order rejection form for the reject outcome if the approver had rejected we will also need to notify the submitter that their request was rejected forget to save then define the subject the recipient and then map the fields in the input tab Notice that that was the wrong place to update the subject. It was not the form. You have to press the form first before you can edit on the right side. Otherwise, you would actually have edited the the process, the whole process. So now we are in the order rejection form, and this is the right place to update the subject for the rejection, as well as the recipient. careful what you're reading because the, sc the screens all look the same regardless of what you're editing whether it is a form or the process Now since this is a rejection outcome, this is basically the end of the flow and you, you connect it to the end node. Same with the order confirmation form, which you have to connect to the end node as that marks the end of the process, although we will enhance it later.
to simulate posting something to backend SAP. Now next is a process condition. Think of it as your if else. If a condition is true, go through this branch, else it goes to the other branch. And here we will put a condition if and when the workflow requires an approval and when it doesn't which means auto approve so here we are defining a condition we will select the field to evaluate in this case quantity and we put is greater than 10 so if quantity is greater than 10 it will go to the true branch or the if branch where it satisfies the condition otherwise it will go to the else branch meaning quantity is less than 10 and here for the less than 10 we will create our auto approval notification form and in this case we will duplicate the order confirmation form as basically it will contain the same set of information except for the subject or the heading so do the duplication in the main screen in the overview and find the form in the drop down I mean in the artifact list then press the three dots and choose duplicate and enter the name of the duplicated form make sure the wordings are updated to reflect auto confirmation and don't forget to save So here the else branch is also called the default branch which means if the condition is not satisfied in the if then it will go to the else or the default and that is where we will attach our auto approval notification form. So connect it to the end node, press save, and it should look like this. And that's it. Next we will integrate it or call it 
manually through the API. 